what is going on YouTube? In today's video, we're gonna be doing a review of the Yas Wilder Plasma Cutter, the 65 amp. So that's that right behind me. I did a reveal on their ACDC Pro uh, Welder, and that thing is awesome. I was learning aluminum with it, getting better at it, and I'll be posting some more videos um, of the welder. But in, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a reveal on this. I already do have a plasma cutter right there. Uh, that one is a cut 50, just a cheapy. I think it was like 169 bucks. Um, it works great, but it lacks a lot of features that this has. So we'll do an unboxing, see what comes with it. We'll set it up on that table there, and then we'll start cutting some uh, thin and thick materials and see uh, how good is it. Uh, so let's go. So we're gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna set the camera on the tripod. This is model cut 65 DS. So 65 amp, cut 50 is 50 amp. So this technically should cut thicker stuff. So let me set this on the tripod and we'll get to unboxing. All right, let's cut it open. Your accessories all in here. The machine. So one ten and two twenty. It comes with a. 220 plug just like the welder and all the other machines and if you want to run it on 110 there is an adapter here for to convert it but again as i mentioned on previous videos uh the 110 you are not going to be able to cut as thick as a material as you are with the 220 so so looks very nice i want to have both of these machines on the cart so that way i have you know both of these um i can roll it around the shop and work and work and use them That'll be awesome to have them like a matching set, you know what I mean? So, it looks nice, not too heavy, about the same heaviness as the Cut 50. It does have a regulator in the back here. So that one there, the regulator, let me take the camera out of the tripod and I'll show you guys. All right, so I figure I do it side by side, that way I can kind of compare both as I do a review. Um, so this is my, you know, cheap old cutting table. Um, I got this for very cheap. A guy was going to scrap it. So I was like, oh, hell no, I'll take that. Um, I've been cutting some quarter inch thick with this. That's with the cut 50. And again, for a cheap little machine, that's pretty good. As you can see here. I don't know if you go nice, if you go slower, you can get a very nice clean cut. But some people just kind of rush. And then they wonder why their cut is all curved and you got a lot of slag hanging up. So anyway, um, here's the contents of the box. You get your ground clamp, 10 feet, power adapter, uh, foot. That's the 220 to 110 adapter. You get the gas hose for your air. You get your plasma cutter connector torch, uh, IPT40, owner's manual, Teflon tape, and a quarter inch air connector for the back. So let's see. Okay. 
there. So you got your manual, your Teflon. You get this uh, hose here. I'm not a big fan of these hoses here. I kind of like more of a actual air hose like this here, like cramped and stuff. But we'll work with it. I pr I'm not gonna use this actually. This is, so this has a little fitting here. One of those push fittings. And all you do is you push this hose in there and it locks and it won't come out. And if you want it to come out, you push it in and then you pull it out. Um, but you can take this out and put a regular, did they send me one? Let's see. No. You can put a regular air fitting in here and then you can just plug in your compressor directly to this or your airline directly to this and you don't have to worry about this little hose here. So, you got your 10 foot ground clamp. Your 10 foot torch. Open it up. All right, I took it out of the bag, that way you guys can see it. So, 10 foot ground clamp, your air hose, which most people won't use, your torch and your adapter. 220 to 110, which is a perfect place for us right here. Unless you have zero option of running 220, don't even bother with 110 unless you're cutting like eighth inch. Um, obviously, I'm not going to throw it out. I'm going to save it. But in case I want to do something outside that's thin and I have an extension cord that's long, I can run 110 out there. Obviously, to run 220, it's a lot more of a hassle. But um, try your best to run these machines, any kind of a inverted machines on 220, it'll just be so much better. Um, your torch comes with a nice little tip here. So the way when you're cutting, there's a gap. So that's cool. Uh, the consumables does look different than my other one. As you can see here. So I have to look into what kind of consumables these takes uh, so I can order a kit. Um, got a nice trigger guard. So if you drop it, it won't accidentally arc it because this is not a this has a pilot arc so as soon as you press it you have a flame coming out um unlike the other ones where you have to touch metal this one is literally press the trigger and go so having a guard here is nice uh it does have a ball swivel here so you can move the torch around that's cool it looks nice in quality has a cap here which again one-handed problems I'm gonna take this off. That's the connector. You can only go in one way because you have the little triangle uh, tab there. So that will go on the front. So we'll move this to the side and look over the machine. See what the machine looks like. All right, so back here, you do have a regulator and a water trap. So um, it's very hard to not get water in your lines unless you have a couple of these in line with your compressor. Um, and the, the little bit of water that does reach um, the plasma cutter, this will grab. So you're good to go. Most people, like I said, are gonna take this fitting out and put a regular fitting. No, one of these here, I don't know if I have one in stock, but one of these with the uh, mail. So, most people are just gonna literally plug their compressor directly to it. So they both have a regulator on the back. The only difference is this regulator here, if I can show you. Um, you have to assemble it yourself and you have to bolt it back with that little bracket there. And then you have to run a hose from here to the machine, which again, sometimes you do get leaks here. This is literally your feed line uh, after it's been adjusted. So, you know, you have another hose here that goes into the machine. So. You have to assemble all this by yourself where this one is already done for you. You don't have to do anything other than install that fit in there. So it's already much easier. Uh, this one has a gauge. So you come here, if you're cutting, uh, you know, quarter inch, you set this to whatever pressure. I usually cut at like higher, higher air pressures than, than the machine says. Uh, I feel like you get a better cut. So I'll cut at like 60, 70 PSI uh, when I'm doing quarter inch and basically when you turn on the machine you keep turning this knob until you see 60 on the gauge and you're good to go well this one here is digital so this is basic knob on off that's it this one you actually have trigger features you have 4t 2t you have a lot more features you have digital screen so this is a lot nicer machine so we'll uh power this on we already did a walk around of everything you got your torch uh, here, your ground, pretty simple. And then we'll turn it on. Then we'll go through the settings of the screen 
and uh, see how it works. All right, so as you guys can see here, I replaced that fitting with the regular fitting so I can plug the air compressor right here. Uh, we're gonna power both of them on. This is not really a comparison, but I just wanna give you guys a comparison. Like this is so much cheaper, but this also has so many more features. So we'll turn this on, take a quick look at this, and then we'll turn this on and see all the nice features. All right, so I got my airline connected. I did add this red hose here because uh, every time I was to connect my compressor directly to this, this bracket's so flimsy. I was afraid to like break it. Um, you don't have to worry about uh, doing that with this because this is pretty secure in there. So uh, I already had this set to 60 because that's what I use all the time, as you can see here. So 60, if you want to go higher, you turn it clockwise, it'll go higher. Uh, we'll turn this on, the button's in the back. Very basic. Uh, fan comes on. You go from 10 to 50 amps. Goes to 53, but around 50. So obviously if you're cutting very thick, you go to 50. If you're cutting very thin, I usually leave it at 30. Uh, being a little hotter, it's not going to really hurt much. And then this is how much uh, flow uh, you need to set. It goes from 0.1 to six seconds so i'll show you here so if you set it to low that's how long the air stays running after you let go of the trigger so i usually set this uh pretty high probably six seconds because it's not like you're using gas and you're wasting gas it's just air that the compressor can make more so uh the more air that you run for pulse flow that's pretty much going to cool this down a lot faster and and make sure that you don't go through a lot of consumables so again this works great now it's gonna go for longer it's gonna cool this tip and it's good to go so again no other settings other than set your flow and your amperage that's it now we're gonna turn this one on so we'll go ahead and do a quick setup here it's as easy as it gets the little triangle goes on the bottom, go like that, goes straight in, then you just tighten it. It does not get any easier than that. Just snug it. Okay, so your torch is set up. It already comes all assembled for you. And then your ground. So you see there's a little notch i don't know if you can see there's a little notch here and you line the notch with the bottom here so you put it in there and then you turn it to lock it i found that uh on the welder was the same way so if you see here the actual the tig welder they put a rubber sleeve on this and after you tighten it the sleeve just keeps turning they should have made this out of hard plastic like this so the way you can use that to actually tighten the ground and get a proper ground and what I had to do on the other one, I had to pull this boot back. If I can get this one out. And I had to, uh, see how it's a hex? I had to put a wrench on it, get it nice and tight, and then pull it in again. So what I recommend you guys do is, again, you have to line it up. Turn it. Once it starts to get snug, see how it, it's, it's snug, but it's still can come loose. If you just move this enough, it'll come loose. And this being rubber does not tighten it enough. So basically take a 13 wrench and just kind of snug up that. That way, no matter what you do, you can loosen that up. And then just slide this forward again. Line up the, the hex and slide it forward. It's hard to do with one hand, but yeah, you can see here, slide it forward and then your ground will be nice and secure. Again, if they made this out of hard plastic, then you can literally crank on it, but they made it out of rubber. Who knows why? So yeah, this is pretty much set up as easy as it gets. Two connections on the front. Uh, on the back, I already put my uh, air fitting. The other one just screws on, screws off, and then you put this one on. Uh, uses the typical quarter inch MPT, your regular air compressor fitting. So I didn't have a male, so I did a female and a male adapter here, as you can see. But other than that, uh, connect the air to here, 
turn the machine on, set the settings, and get you cutting. All right, time to power it on. Let's see how that screen looks. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Extremely sharp. The video might not do it justice, but it's extremely sharp um, LED display. Look how much nicer that looks. This looks like a quality high-end machine where that's just two knobs and a cheap gauge. Again, for the price, it does work. I haven't had any issues with it. I've had it for three years, but this is literally an upgrade. So you see here your PSI. Right now my regulator is set to 53, 54. I usually run, the sensor right here, if you're running 110 to run the air between 45 and 60, and if you're running 220 to run between 60 and 90. So like I said, I usually start at 60, 70, so I'll, I'll unlock this, press up. Oh, it was already up. So up, start turning it clockwise. We're gonna turn the pressure up. We'll set it to about 70. A little more. Okay, once you're good, you push it down to lock it. And right now the air pressure is at 70. You can change from PSI to MPA if that's what you like. So it has two settings here. Then right here it says 220 volt. If you had plugged this into a 110, it would have recognized it by itself just like the, wel the welder does. And um, it would say 110 here and the machine will know automatically. You don't have to tell the machine anything. Then right here you have your amperage screen. You turn this knob here to turn up the amps. It goes to 65 and it'll go as low as 20. So for thinner materials, 20, 30, uh, for fully, you know, thick material, 40 to 65. So very nice and responsive. Again, the screen looks beautiful. Then you have your 4T, which is your trigger. So in 4T, it's just like the welder, but if you haven't seen that video, you're gonna press the trigger and release. The torch is gonna stay on with plasma. And then to shut it off, you press it and release again. That's 4T. If you come over here in this button up here and you select mode and you press 2T, now uh, 2T becomes when you press it is on, when you release it is off. So that's the two modes for the trigger that you have. Um, now you can adjust your pulse flow just like this one has the pulse flow for air uh, to cool your consumables. You will go to pulse flow right here and then you will set how many seconds, 20 seconds, it'll go from five all the way up to 20 seconds. So in my case, I'll probably do like 10. You don't really need more than 10 seconds. Now, once you set your seconds that you want the air to come through here, it'll automatically go back to that main screen and you're good to go. So we're, go we're gonna try and cut something here. I have a uh, 316 uh, steel here, I have quarter inch here. Uh, this is eighth inch. And this one's three quarter. We're gonna try and cut that, but we're just gonna cut the edge because these are my plates for my press. And I do not wanna, I'm, I'm still gonna use them. So I don't wanna just cut the thing in half and then be left with no plates. I'm rarely gonna cut something this thick, but it will be nice to know that this little machine packed with features can cut three quarter if you're in a jam and if you need to cut something. So we'll try and see what happens. I also have a rod here. You don't usually cut rod with plasma cutter, I guess. At least I've never had to. But uh, this is 5 8 thick, so we can try and cut that too and see what happens. So, yeah, the Air 71. We'll try 8th inch, so we'll set this at like, we'll, we'll set it at like 30, 40. For 8th inch, it's a little hot. I guess you could go 35, but a little hotter won't. Okay, we'll do 35 and see how it goes. Uh, usually eighth inch, you can start from the middle, and as soon as you press the trigger, it'll cut. A, it'll cut a little hole in it, and then you can go from there. Thicker materials. Uh, if you try and do that, it'll splash back at you. So thicker materials. Typically, you have to start from an edge, and then go in. Let's say if you're doing a circle, you start from the edge, then you do your circle and finish at the same edge. Where on, on eighth inch, you can literally, you know, start anywhere. If I want to start right here and do a circle, I can. Uh, so we'll we'll do some some cutting. I'll put this on the tripod, and uh, let's see what it does. All right, so I didn't make a cut right there, um, and uh, it started cutting great, and then it started cutting kind of crappy, and I realized that my compressor was off. And uh, when I looked at the pressure here, that said 
uh, like 29. So it was running out of air. So I turned my compressor on, filled up the tank. Um, I turned it up a little bit to 80 and I turned it up to 40. My compressor's full, so while I'm cutting, you might hear my compressor kick on, and if it does, sorry about the noise. Uh, but we do have plenty of air now, so let's try it again. Uh, eighth inch, first cut. All right, let's bring the camera close and uh, take a closer look. All right, so here's our view of that cut. Super clean. It's just uh, cutting it by hand is tough, but as you can see right here, it's like, it's extremely clean. Let's turn it around. See the other one here started, started good and then started running out of air, not being able to push the melted metal through because it was too low over pressure. So this one here looks a lot better. All right, next up is going to be the 316 plate. Uh, the fan on this, yes, well, there is a little louder than a fan on a cut 50, but obviously if the machine gets hotter because it cuts thicker metal, um, having a bigger fan is not a bad thing. And usually places that are welded and fabricating and cutting stuff, they're not going to be a quiet environment. So it's actually not that loud, but I don't know how the camera is going to pick it up. Uh, this is literally just a iPhone uh, microphone. Not nothing external or anything because I got a new phone and uh, my microphone that I used for previous videos no longer uh, fits this phone. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. But uh, anyway, let's cut some 316. I'm going to turn up the amperage to probably 40, 45 to 50. 50 should be more than enough. All right, so let's see the cut. So I did knock off a little bit of slag there. So this is how much slag I had. That's cleaned up, but this cut is pretty darn good. Look at that, guys. Super clean. Let me see if I can uh, go to the next camera to show you. I don't think, I don't know if my phone will zoom in. But you can see right there, it's super clean. All right, now we're gonna go up to a quarter inch and see if we look at. For a quarter inch, I'm gonna go probably 60, just cause I have the ability to go to 60. And I'll probably go to 90 for the air. All right, let's try that.
All right, you got to close up. Look at this cut, guys. This is quarter inch. Look how clean it is. That is amazing. You're going to be able to cut quarter inch that clean? That is awesome. Now we're going to go to the rod, which is 5 8 I believe. All right, we'll try the rod at the same settings as we did the quarter inch, 90 and 60. And then we'll bump it up to 65 for the three quarter. Like I said, you typically don't cut rod, but let me see if I can get a close up. Super clean. See how quick I cut that? Wasn't even, wasn't even struggling. You knocked that little. You knocked that out of the way, and you have a. No, quick cut. All right, guys, the ultimate test, three quarter inch. That's like hardened steel. That is made for press and bearings and stuff. So we'll see how that's gonna cut. But honestly, any machine that cuts quarter inch this easy or even five eighths, for $255, you cannot beat this. But again, let's see if it'll do thicker stuff. I'm gonna cut just the edge of it because like I said, I plan on reusing this plate and I do not want to ruin it. So, just so you guys. I know I should be using gloves, but I've done it enough times where I'm kind of not afraid of it no more. I can't believe it cut three quarter. Let's see how it looks. Obviously not super pretty, but I mean, it cut like nothing really. So that's awesome that I'm, I'm able to cut something this thick. That is crazy. This is the other side. Again, for something this thick, it's really not bad. Especially since I, I went slow, but I mean, I didn't go that slow. And I uh, cut pretty easily. All right, so here's my conclusion. Um, this thing wins hands down for an extra $100. So this one is about 160 This one is 255 right now. As of the day before Thanksgiving 2024, uh, when this video was made, um, for $100, you get more cutting power the machine looks nicer it has it's easier to adjust you have you know it's just it's just a nicer machine just the screen alone the digital screen is very nice uh the torch feels a lot more comfortable in your hand this is nice and flexible and thin too so it gets out of the way it's just an all-around way nicer machine than this one here don't get me wrong for a budget if you're on a super budget and you can't afford that this is a good alternative but if you can squeeze a little more and get that, that is your ticket right there. Very nice machine. It'll come in handy pairing with that. And I'm not just saying that just because they sent this to me for a reveal. I literally 
love this machine now compared to that one. So I'll probably be using this 24 seven and that one will be my backup for when I need to do something outside in 110. I'll literally just use that one out there, let it get beat up. This one will sit in the car. Um, I do have another plasma cutter that supposedly it's an 80 amp one um, that I'll, I might be doing a review on. Um, if I do keep uh, subscribing, that way you get the notification. And uh, we'll see if the one that I'm going to do cuts even thicker material, which I, uh, I'm i going to find some thicker metal to test that one. But as of now, for your car enthusiasts or for a shop that, that doesn't do a, a ton, a ton of fabrication 24-7, this is a great machine, extremely good price. I will have a link below. Um, the Cut 65DS Pro, apparently it's the same one as this one here. Basically, they started with this and then they changed the name. The specs are the same. So um, if you go on Amazon on the link and you see that that one says 65DS Pro, that is just because they changed the name, but it's the same feature, same screen, everything, same amperage. So that's what I'll have a link below. I'll try and find a, a consumables um, packet that I'm going to buy. And then I'll leave a link there for you guys to buy. If you guys buy this machine, you always have want to have extra consumables because you burned that tip and you left with no plasma cutter. Um, it would have been nice if, uh, yes, well, there's sat maybe two or three because they're cheap. They're less than $20. You can buy a consumables uh kit and uh it would have been nice for uh yes welder to send you know maybe two extra of each two extra tips or um a little any any kind of consumables like that welder did come in consumables uh this one here did not it would be nice if they sent a couple uh just so you have extras until you buy something else but uh yeah i really uh, love this machine i 100 recommend it and uh we'll see you guys on the next one